is a very funny comedian. Uh, she's doing the Judy show, My Life is a Sitcom, at the DR2 Theatre in New York City. Please welcome the adorable Judy Gold, everybody. Judy Gold. <laughs> to be here. I am so thrilled. I actually just flew in from New York City. I uh, got to the airport and they had the new body scanner. You know the body scanner you walk through, they can see everything. So I walk through and the TSA agent says to me, thank you very much, sir. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's our secret. Come on. <laughs> but uh, oh, I sat in the emergency exit because, uh, you know, I need the extra, extra leg room and they actually made me pay extra to sit in the emergency exit. I mean, it's ridiculous. You have to pay for everything. And then the flight attendant comes over to me and says, hi, are you aware that you're sitting in the emergency exit? I'm like, yeah, I'm aware I'm sitting in the emergency exit. We need a verbal yes that you'll help in case of an emergency. I'm like, yeah, I'll help if they pay me, okay? <laughs> I had to pay to sit here. They can pay to get off the plane, all right? 20 bucks, lady. I don't care if your hair's on fire, all right? Don't throw the baby in my face. That's another 10, all right? <laughs> Traveling is awful. I spent now I'm, you know, middle-aged, so everything's harder. I am um, 48. I know I look great, thanks. So, uh, but I gotta tell you, it really is, it's, it's not that much different than being in your 20s. Because I remember being in my 20s, and the only difference between being in your 20s and being in your 40s is the way you introduce your friends to each other. Because I remember my 20s, I'd introduce my friends, and be like, oh, you gotta meet my friend Bill, he's amazing, he just ran the marathon, he's really into jazz, he just passed the bar. Now in my 40s, this is how I introduce my friends to each other. Okay, so. Tonight, you're gonna meet my friend Sandy. She is amazing, but <laughs> they just found a tumor behind her right eye. It's nothing, it is completely benign. They're taking it out next week. Look at the left eye. The right eye's like going all over the place. <laughs> she might fall down or slur her speech, but she's an amazing person and she writes poetry and she's been published, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you, you get older and all people do is talk about their, their medical ail ailments. It's like, and, and everyone has a tumor. It's like every week I get a phone call. They found something, and it's always the size of a fruit. Have you noticed that? <laughs> they found something, it's the size of a grape, it's the size of a lemon, it's the size of Richard Simmons, you know? <laughs> in our generation, I think tumors should come in tall, grande, and vente, okay? <laughs> Oh, here's what, oh, I have to tell you the story. So last year, I'm laying on the beach with my girlfriend and we fall asleep, and this is such a middle-aged thing. We fall asleep and we wake up about 90 minutes later and my girlfriend, Elisa, says to me, oh my God, Judy, look how beautiful it is here. And I said, yeah, it really is. And then she says, and the lighting, I mean, the lighting is just perfect. I said, yeah, you're right. Then she says, you know what? Tomorrow, we should come back here and bring our tweezers and magnifying mirror. <laughs> tweezers and magnifying mirror. Like I'm gonna pluck hairs out all day on the beach. Let me tell you something, gentlemen. If you're ever out to dinner with a woman, you're in a deep, deep conversation and she goes like this. <laughs> she is not listening to one thing that is coming out of your mouth, okay? Because the world has just ended until she gets that hair out of her face, I'm telling you. I wake up sometimes the black four footer and people are doing like tightrope exercise. I'm like, where was this yesterday? No one told me about it, but. Uh, <laughs> So what happens when you get older? And I got the kids, which I have to tell you, kids are very cute when they're little, and then they get really annoying. I have a teenager who literally ignores me constantly. His name's Henry. And the other day I went home, and he's laying on the couch, and I called his name about 12 times. No, no response. And then finally I screamed his name really loud, and then he says, can't you see I'm doing something? What are you, deaf? And I said, first of all, you do not talk to me like that. And second of all, it's what are you, blind, okay? <laughs> But uh, I am a gay mom, and I have to say, it's, uh, there's a lot of challenges being a gay mom, and I, I actually had to do the talk with my kids, and I have to say, it was very difficult explaining heterosexual sex to my sons with a complete lack of enthusiasm, you know? <laughs> but I have been asked the most amazing questions. Uh, I was on the, in the playground with them a couple of months ago. Well, it was actually a few years ago, they were very little, and uh, this woman comes over to me and asks me if I was planning on raising my sons as homosexuals. <laughs> And I said, absolutely, you know, the G.I. Joe, he just got kicked out of the military, so they're playing with Barbies right now. And uh, we don't have any bedrooms in our apartment, so they'll be sleeping in the closet for the first 18 years of their lives, okay? Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>